Hello everybody. So my name's Jenny. I'm Jenny Senior. I'm one of the lecturers on the Nursing with Leadership course here at University of Leicester. Um, and I'm going to take you through a bit of a presentation. There will be an opportunity for questions at the end, so please do feel free to save them up, write them in the chat and I'll have a look at those at the end. So the biggest question maybe at the beginning is why would you come to study nursing in Leicester or at the um, University of Leicester? And I think if you're looking at nursing as a general thing, the main reason for coming to Leicester is that we are the only nursing course in the UK that integrates leadership throughout the course. So at the end of your four years, you will have a master's nursing qualification. You will register on the NMC register. Um, that's Nursing and Midwifery Council. You have to register there to be able to work. And you will have a leadership qualification and portfolio that is nationally recognised. And of course, you'll develop skills to become a nurse. And because we've integrated leadership, you will be a leader in nursing for the future, which is exciting. So we offer three different pathways. You'll see four written here, but one of them is actually not running in the next couple of years. So the dual field courses you can do are mental health and adult nursing combined or mental health and child nursing combined. And these are both with leadership. These encompass child physical health and adult and child mental health if you do the child field. The single field courses um, that we would generally offer would be adult as a single registration or mental health with a single registration. But we are currently not able to offer mental health as a single registration. So if you're thinking about, um, about applying, please don't apply for mental health at the moment. So the Nursing with Leadership MSCI undergraduate masters, both pathways or all three pathways include interprofessional learning opportunities. Everybody shares their first year module with midwifery, the medical school, physiotherapy and radiography. We also have shared modules throughout the course in leadership and evidence based practice. Those are all shared with midwifery. So the leadership module is accredited with Leicester Business School and with it, which is again within the University of Leicester. So the, the training is designed to deliberately produce high quality nurses. We're looking to enable you to deliver expert care and pioneer in leadership within nursing. We work in partnership with all three hospitals in Leicester, that's Leicester University Hospitals of Leicester. Um, so that includes Leicester Royal Infirmary, Leicester General Hospital and the Glenfield, and they've all got different areas of specialism. We also work in partnership with the Community Partnership NHS Trust, and they cover all of the community nursing as well as all the mental health um, um, placements. So by working with them as well, we're really able to cover a lot of different um, experiences for you. Placements can be right the way across the Midlands to give you a broader range of clinical experiences. For example, we're now including Kettering and Coventry and also recently Peterborough and Northampton hospitals, um, as well as their community trusts. So the, any applicants who live further out towards those areas, it would be very easy for us to arrange placements for you out there closer to home, maybe, um, which um, might help with your living costs and certainly gives you a different insight into how different hospitals work, different community trusts work to give you a broader experience going forwards. So you will get two clinical placements per year during your training. If you're doing the dual registration, then one of those placements each year will be for that specific field, so either child or adult, and the other placement will be your mental health placement. If you're doing a single field training in adult nursing, then both of your placements will be within an adult area of care. Now, the length of placements increases each year. In year one, we will give you two placements each of being six weeks. That goes up to 10 weeks each in year two, 12 in year three and 14 in year four. Currently, the year four placement is 15 weeks, but we take five days out across those 15 weeks um, to support your leadership portfolio. 
months, but it gives you just that little bit longer to be in contact with your assessors on the wards. And so far, our students have really appreciated that extra little bit of time. During your third year, we have an additional um, module. So in fact, one of those 12 weeks is dropped to eight weeks. We take four weeks out to give you an elective module. And I will talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Clinical practice is always supervised by registered nurses. You are never allowed out onto the wards. You're never sent out onto the wards without appropriate support. So every shift you work, you will be looked after, supported, supervised by another registered nurse. That nurse might be working at the next bed or might even be working two or three beds away as you improve in your expertise, but they will always be available and always be keeping a gentle eye on you. So our course structure, we have different modules that we work through. Um, you will um, have a full year long foundations of nursing that runs through both semesters in your first year. Um, an anatomy and physiology applied to nursing. Evidence based practice. Now this one, um, you will get four different evidence based practice modules, one in each year. And the same goes for your leadership. There's one in each year. Then there's specialist care in mental health practice professional, ethical and legal challenges in nursing, management of complex and long term conditions. There's one each for adult and child field, which you will do specific to whichever field you're doing. And then there's also complex and long term conditions in mental health. There's a pharmacology and medicines prescribing applied to nursing practice in your third year, holistic assessment and recognition of health and social care needs and fundamental knowledge, values and skills for mental health assessment. So you'll see it covers a wide range of different nursing aspects. So we have lots of different ways of assessing you. Different people um, like different ways of being assessed. So we try to mix it up and make sure that nobody has too much of what they really don't enjoy. Unfortunately, it means that everybody gets a little bit of what they don't enjoy. So we do have some unseen paper exams. Um, for example, in your first year, there are two, one of which is pure biology and the other of which is applied biology. And in your second year, you will have an unseen paper in which uh, will require you to write a care plan. Otherwise, we have essays submitted. We ask you to do presentations. Um, we have seminars that you um, present. We have a fantastic Dragon's Den in your fourth year, which our students get very stressed about and then thoroughly enjoy when they come to the point of actually doing it. And on this occasion, you're encouraged to um, devise a service improvement that you can describe and you do all the budgeting and the resource finding and run through exactly how your service improvement would work and then come and present it in exactly the same way as the inventors do on Dragon's Den. Now, we don't have a pile of money to give out to you, but we do have marks to award you to help you pass your final exams. Um, we also get you devising posters and when you come for interview, you will see a lot of the posters. We keep them all up on the walls for everybody to see because they really are of a very high standard. We will offer you a mock interview, which is actually part of your assessed work in your fourth year, which not only gives you some more credits, but it also helps you to prepare for job interviews. And of course, no masters would be complete without a dissertation. And for the dissertation, we will invite you to do either a service. Sorry, um, now my word search has completely gone. A systematic review um, or a, a service improvement plan. There you go. It's the end of the day. Um, we have obviously formative assessments where you can practice. So we'll have mock exams. You're welcome to do um, work towards written assignments and hand them into your personal tutors or module leaders for them to look through and comment on and support you in improving. We'll do small interactive group work, peer review and feedback and as much one to one tutorial support as you feel you need. And obviously when you're doing your dissertation, there will be you will have a supervisor assigned to you and generally the supervisors organise group supervision sessions about once a month that you're all invited to join and then you have one to one in between that to keep you online. So lots and lots of support around your modules. So that the School of Nursing sits within the School of Healthcare and there are, um, as, as, as I said right at the beginning with the different modules that you work within, um, the School of Healthcare includes physiotherapy, 
nursing and midwifery, um, operation department practitioners, and um, the new one is radiography, which has just started this year, which is um, one of our exciting developments. So we work very closely as well with the university's medical school to embed the ethos of a multi-professional team. Nurses, after all, work very closely with doctors, so the sooner um, everybody gets used to each other and how each different team works, the better you'll be able to work with these people later on. So we have some outstanding learning facilities which will enhance and improve your knowledge and skills. We've got brand new lecture and seminar rooms in the Robert Kilpatrick Clinical Skills Building, which is where I'm presenting from now otherwise known as the RKCSB because it's a lot easier to say and we're based on at, at the Leicester Royal Infirmary site right next to the adult emergency department if you're coming for interview if you find ED turn to your left you will find our building we have a brand new clinical skills unit here with mock wards clinical areas we've got mannequins one of whom is extremely spooky to walk past after dark because she breathes blinks her eyes and has a pulse we can also put different abdomens on her, we can inject her, take blood from her, put tubes into her. She's, she's a very long suffering mannequin, um, but she really does um, facilitate great learning opportunities. Another huge opportunity that we have here, which is relatively unique, I think there are two or three other nursing schools around the company, country that have this, but we are very privileged to have access for you nursing students to the dissection room in one of the main campus buildings further up um, within the main campus. This is a room that holds a large number of human cadavers, which you will have access to for anatomy and physiology learning, actually using real people. This is a huge privilege. This is people who have donated their bodies for science and um, we keep the bodies for five or six years, after which they have a funeral that the university pays for. You will not be given your own cadaver. That is something that medical students have. However, you will be invited to go and do a minimum of two sessions looking at the heart and the lungs, where you will be in a position to watch the dissection and handle the dissection of hearts and lungs. And it really does give you an amazing opportunity to see the different structures within the hearts and lungs and to be taken through the function, how these organs work, how they support the body and so on. It's a fantastic opportunity. A lot of people feel a little bit squeamish about taking up that opportunity. But what I would say is that everybody who has been in the dissection room comes out absolutely buzzing about it because the learning opportunity is immense. It's not mandatory. If you really do feel that you're too squeamish, that's absolutely fine. It, there's no bad marks for not going in. And there will be one of us available outside the room to scoop up anybody who comes out feeling a bit green, um, sort you out and if need be, send you back in again or give you a cup of tea and send you home. Um, but it is a fantastic opportunity. So how do we teach you? What do we want you to do? Your style of learning will be divided 50-50 between clinical practice and theory. Your theory will be delivered through blended learning, lectures, seminars, some online, although it's less than obviously it was two, three years ago. And then we use the simulation and clinical skills unit here in our KCSB. It is a full time course. It will be around 37 and a half hours a week taught content when you are in theory block. And the NMC, Nursing and Midwifery Council, want you to achieve 100% of those hours. So if you miss any, you have to prove to us that you have caught up and we'll, we'll, ex we'll explain how we get you to do that later on. We do expect you to do additional self-directed hours and we'll help you with um, understanding what you need to do in that time. Some of it we will be quite um, prescriptive about. We'd like you to revise this or that. Um, others of it will simply give you subject areas and say, you know, we've talked to you this much about this, we want you to go away and do some more. Um, but you do need to anticipate this being a full time course. You have access to the multi-million pound clinical skills unit with the mock-up wards, ICU units, interactive mannequins and so on. But um, although we'll organise sessions for you within that, you can also ask us to set up um, different bits of the clinical sims if you've got a lunchtime or an afternoon 
you can come and ask us, can I have a go at such and such and we will set it up for you. There's usually two or three of us in the office and we can support you in um, practicing the clinical skills that we've taught you in theory blocks. We also have an amazing team of service users who come and help us to teach. So they're very involved in recruitment. I've just run some interviews this afternoon and I had two service users working with us and we've actually only interviewed a very small number this afternoon. It was our first run of the season. So we've interviewed eight and very happily we've made offers of eight places this afternoon and that would not have been possible without our service users offering their perspective. We also use the service users in simulations, exams, presentations, and we rely on their willingness to share personal experiences to provide real colour and background to the clinical aspects that you're learning. We also ask them to give feedback in clinical practice. These are service users. That means that they are people who access healthcare either for themselves or for their partners or children. And so we ask them to feed back to us how they have been treated by our nursing students in clinical practice. We're looking to build capacity with children and young people and other diverse groups, but this is very difficult because of insurance and um, capacity for consent. And this is the only reason that we've not got very far with that yet, but we are still working on it. And our service users also help us in curriculum development. So anytime student says, what about this? What about that? We haven't learned anything about the other. We go to our service users and say, hmm, students have suggested this. What do you think? And we sit down and we think about it. Now, any curriculum development has to go through the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So it takes a while. So any suggestions you make might not be visible for a year or so because it literally takes that long. But we do take service user comments and student nurse comments on board when it comes to developing our service. We also like to support you. We want you to enjoy your training. We want you to succeed in your training. And in order to facilitate that, we will put as much support in place as we possibly can for you. So there is a lot of academic support, personal support and pastoral support. Within our team, we have a head of nursing, a deputy head of nursing. We've got personal tutors as well as subject specialists. We also organise a buddy system so that you've got some peer mentoring. And then, as I said earlier, you've got the clinical support in practice with the registered nurses. In addition to all of that, you've got the formal university support services, and that includes learning support and student welfare, accessibility, who will help you with any learning needs that you have, counselling systems. And within that and the student welfare, we have an amazing team um, simply called concerned and if we ever get to the point where we're concerned about a student either because we've not seen them, they've not been attending or we have seen them and we realise that they are struggling, then a quick phone call or a quick email to concerned and the whole system gears up and supports them in an amazing fashion. I've seen it in action and I really have been very impressed with their service. We have wellbeing, including the new School of Health service, and we have, of course, careers development, where because we definitely want you to be able to get a job at the end of all of this. So the picture that you can see on this slide is one of my favourite pictures. You've got six people here and a mannequin in the very background. Um, one of the people in this picture is a lecturer. You can only tell because she's the only one not in uniform. But otherwise, this is Hannah Richardson, um, she's currently our year one lead and she works with the students in our social media, doing small videos for us to use in teaching, as well as um, advertising the course and marketing. But Hannah is incredibly popular with the students because she spends time and gets to know people and works with them. Um, and as I say, that's just one of my favourite photographs of them all laughing and Hannah on the bed with the rest of the students. Absolutely brilliant. Now, other ways to support you, obviously finances are top of a lot of people's anxiety lists. So if you're eligible, you can get a training grant of £5,000 per academic year. If you do the dual field, which includes mental health, you will get an additional £1,000 per academic year. And this training grant is not repayable, that is your money. 
You can also have parental support if you, of up to two thousand pounds if you have at least one dependent child under seven, sorry under fifteen years of age, or if they're under seventeen years of age if they've got additional educational needs. So that's an additional support, uh, financial support there. We will also arrange for you to have back excess travel and temporary accommodation costs. So if you go elsewhere for placement, so for example, if you've got accommodation in Leicester sorted out, but you go and do a 10 week block in Coventry, we will support you with the temporary accommodation costs of living in Coventry. If you do a community placement that requires you to travel to get there or even to use your own car to travel around there, then again, you will get money back for that excess travel. So that is all um, and all there to make it possible for you to reach out and make the most of all the different training opportunities that we give you. We also have a fund within the university that you can apply to if you're experiencing financial hardship. Um, it's not a guaranteed um, payment, but we will support you in making that application and help you to word it. So and advise you as to whether the situation that you find yourself in is likely to be something that that um, fund can support. So that again has been seen to be very helpful for nursing students. On graduation, you will join the Nursing and Midwifery Council register and you can transition into your first clinical post. You'll also have developed your leadership portfolio skills and you'll have that document to take with you. So that's your Leicester Award Employability Programme and you'll you'll be backed up with the university's career development service that we have Festival of Careers and we have lots of support for applying for jobs. As I said, one of your assignments will actually be to come in for a mock interview and prove to us that you've learned all the right um, things to know about to be able to talk knowledgeably in your interview. So that's a really valuable experience that our fourth years have appreciated. We'll also obviously help you on a one to one basis. You can come and talk to us about areas that you want to go and work in. Um, as I implied earlier, there are specialist field specialists within the team of lecturers. For example, um, I'm a children's nurse and I worked very specifically with um, uh, the consultant who works with complex technology. So if you wanted to work in a children's surgical ward, I would be a good person to come and talk to. Equally, we've got cardiology nurse specialists, we've got community nurses, just looking around the room to make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, they're not here, it's just empty desks. Um, we've got obviously the mental health people. Um, who else have we got? Oh, and the children's community nurse specialists. So lots of different um, areas of specialism. Intensive care nurse, forgot Chris. How could I forget Chris? When you've met Chris, you'll understand how I could not possibly forget Chris. Um, he was an intensive care nurse before he came into academia. So lots of different people that you can talk to about different areas that you might want to go and work in. Um, lots of support. Lots of different opportunities as well. Um, now I've re I referred earlier to our elective module. This is a four week opportunity where you get to choose where you want to go and work for four weeks. We do ask you to do it from the perspective of leadership rather than just going to have a look at something a bit different clinically. But actually, if you want to look at something a bit clinically, you can do that, but concentrate on the leadership aspect of it. But that will give you a very round experience while you're there. Bethan, the um, young lady in the red in this picture, developed um, an elective pathway for students who were interested in research. So she worked with both the adult and child research teams within the University Hospitals of Leicester and devised a pathway for people to go and spend four weeks with that team doing different projects, working with different people and so on. So she's established this and left the pathway open for other students. So currently this year we have a student going to both one each to the adult and the child field research teams, picking up and following on after Bethan. We wrote her um, experiences up and nominated her for um, the Nursing Time Student of the Year for research. And we're very proud to say that Bethan won her category. So this is her on the platform receiving her award at the Nursing Times um, Award. So we had a fantastic day out. Thank you, Bethan. Um, but of course, it's given Bethan an absolutely fantastic thing to put on her application forms going forward. But this is not only something that she did and did to a very high standard,
but was recognised nationally for her endeavours, which was very exciting. So if you would like to apply to Leicester, um, we have a process that we're going to want you to go through. I'm just going to move the little box out of the way so as I can read it. Um, so you will need three A levels and you need to be working towards three Bs, one of which must be a science based subject that can be biology, chemistry, physics or psychology. General studies, critical thinking and global perspectives are not accepted as one of these three A levels. You must get three that do not include any of those. We also need you to have achieved GCSE maths and English language and a science and these all need to be at grade four or above. If you're doing a BTEC, we need you to get three Ds in the extended diploma in health and social care, health studies or applied science. So three Ds at that. If you're doing an access to health healthcare, um, that needs again to be healthcare or science based diploma at level three with 60 credits overall. Of those 60, 15 must be in topics related to human biology or anatomy and physiology. And of those level three credits, at least 30 of them must be a distinction with no, no less than 15 at merit. If you are already holding a degree, um, it needs to have been taken within the last three years and it must be um, at two one or an international equivalent or above. T levels are now rapidly coming online. We've got more and more students applying that are doing their T levels and we're looking for a merit in an appropriate relative subject area for that. If you're considering our course having come out of the armed forces, please contact us to talk to us individually about the, any qualifications that you have when you did them and so on, because we make individual um, decisions to support you and make it as easy as possible for you to move into civilian life. So we'd very much like you to keep in touch if you are considering applying to the University of Leicester. We have three different means on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. TikTok, of course, now has a different name, but I'm far too old to know what that is. Um, I'm going to guess that it's X, but if my children were here, they would be rolling about the floor laughing. So my apologies, guys. So we have accommodation options at Leicester and I know that I need to wrap it up fairly quickly or Bex is going to be talking to me. Accommodation options in Leicester, students can stay in the city accommodation, which is next to the Sir Bob Burgess building. If you come to Leicester, we'll direct you to that. Or if you come to Leicester and you don't know the area, head out away from the Royal up Welford Road and it's the lovely new building on the right as you go up the hill. There's also accommodation out in Oadby, which is one of the suburbs of Leicester, and we've got lots of different options. Some of them have their own gym, they've all got study spaces, free shuttle buses down to main campus, all sorts of ways to make living in the different areas enjoyable. So do look at our accommodation um, if you're thinking of applying. And that's me. That's I think I've just about filled the 30 minutes. How? I, I couldn't have managed that better if I'd actually watched my clock all the way through. Um, time for questions if there are any. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, we do have some questions, so I'll just turn off your presentation. So um, our first question is, what does a typical day look like for a nursing with leadership student? Right, OK, so um, that would depend very much on whether they're in theory block or whether they're out on placement. So if I take that question in two halves, if you were here in on in um, theory block, can't get my grammar straight, um, you would spend most of the day in a classroom. That said, it will not be most of the day having to end your lectures. We absolutely understand that lectures are hard work and can uh, often are not a good learning environment. So we do a lot with group work. We do a lot with our clinical simulation. We do a lot where we give you pre-session work and post-session work where you'll perhaps revise um, a body system and then we will apply nursing care to that during the lecture session and then we'll send you away to write a care plan and consider the different nursing aspects that you need to do. So a lot of it will be small group work, independent work if you work more readily that way, you making good use of the library, good use of the evidence base and really teaching you 
good structures and frameworks that you will use going forward into clinical practice that will enable you to um, just very easily slip into the way of, right, I need to write a care plan. What's the structure of a good care plan? What do I need to think about to be able to write that? So then we lead you into your placement and we would hope that over the four years, those structures and frameworks that we've taught you to use in your theory block, you will start putting to use in your clinical placements. If you're on placement in one of our um, clinical wards, if it's physical health, you will do two or three shifts in a row, or they might be broken up over the course of the week. Some areas will not allow you to do more than two shifts in a row. And certainly I wouldn't want to see anybody doing more than three shifts in a row because they start early and finish late and you need to rest and recuperate in between. So you will have these long 12 hour shifts. You'll take report in the morning, take handover, learn about the students that you're going to be looking after for that period of time. You will, as I've said before, work with another registered nurse with those patients, but you will provide total patient care over the course of that 12 hour shift. So you'll get to know your patient, you'll be doing um, checking their observations, temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure. You might well support them having blood taken, having other treatments and procedures. You will help administer medication. You might take people to theatre. You can accompany the, the registered nurse in bringing people back from theatre and getting them set up in their post-operative state. Lots and lots of different skills. I could go on forever. If you're working in the community you'll have visits to do you'll have clinics to support some of them are health promotion some of them are recovery some of them are treatments depending on which team you're with um, and then of course mental health is something altogether different and i have to say it's far too long ago since i did my student nurse bit on a mental health ward and i absolutely can't remember what the day looks like other than drinking an awful lot of coffee um, but I don't think that's probably the case anymore. I think it is far more interactive than it used to be because um, I am quite elderly. My mental health bit was back in 1984. So <laughs> don't give that away very often. Just Thanks, Jenna. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few more. We, uh, yeah, so uh, the next one is. Uh, for my GCSE science grade, I've got a four slash three as it was combined science. Would that be accepted? Yes. Yes. Is the I'd, short answer. <laughs> I'd say yes. Um, I'd love to know what which A levels you're doing. Um, just make sure that one of them is biology, chemistry, physics or psychology. Um, so if you're able to pop that in the chat, then I can give you some proper reassurance. Um, but I am, as well as being one of the lecturers and the child lead, I'm also the admissions lead. So it's me that looks at your applications and makes a decision. So I'm going to say yes, I will consider that as long as your A-level choices are right. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, our next question is, uh, what's the difference between a normal adult nursing course and a course with leadership? OK, so we are, as I said at the beginning, the only nursing course in the UK that offers leadership. In order to progress as a nurse, when you first get a job, you'll come in with your with your qualifications. You will go in as a band five. If you want to seek promotion, you will go up the ladder into a six and then later a seven. And realistically, by the time you're considering a band seven post, you will need to show some skills in leadership and better still, you, you will be a better candidate, a stronger candidate if you've got some leadership qualifications. And to do those once you've qualified already will mean paying for the course, taking time out of your clinical role in order to attend the course and complete um, assignments. And a lot of people by the time they're looking for band sevens are beginning to settle down in life. They've maybe got other responsibilities, other um, life, experiences that they like, either children or time consuming hobbies, all sorts of different things people are doing such that extra study at that stage is costly and time consuming. What we're doing is putting it into your general training with two major benefits as far as I'm concerned. One is you don't have to pay for it. You're already paying for the course and there is nothing extra for doing your leadership. 
So you will come out already with your leadership qualification that you will need later on. But the other advantage in some ways is even better. And that is that you will have, you'll be absolutely ingrained in the leadership related to how nursing works. At every stage that you will learn about being a nurse, you will also learn about how to lead in that situation. So everything will be interrelated all the way through your training. It will become absolute second nature to understand not only leading the team, but leading yourself. How do you behave in this situation? How do you make sure that not only you're able to lead the team, but you're able to function as part of the team in order to be a useful member within that team? So you don't have to be the boss to be a good team worker. And you don't have to be the absolute ultimate leader to be a good team worker. And we will teach you all of that right from ground zero upwards. And I think that is probably the most beneficial part of doing a leadership component right the way through your training. Fab, um, we've had a reply from the previous um, person asking about the GCSE science grade. They've said that they take psychology. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So you're going to be a, a grand person to get your application form in um, and I will definitely consider you for interview. It, it sounds very much as though um, you've got everything going. Absolutely fine. Woohoo! <laughs> um, our next question is, um, how long are the shifts for placement and are you allocated into hospitals or do you find a hospital where you apply to do placement? OK. So it varies across the board, to be fair. Um, University Hospitals Le of Leicester, generally speaking, the clinical placements are 12 hours. Um, so it's a long day, but you only do two or three. Three most weeks, occasionally four, but they will be broken up. You will never do more than three in a row. If your um, placement um, off-duty writers try to give you four in a row, please come and tell us and we'll have a quiet word with them because they really shouldn't. Um, even the qualified nurses don't do four in a row. So um, it will have been a mistake rather than real. Um, so that's the main pattern. But if you're somebody who maybe you've got some additional health problems, for example, we have a student at the moment who's got quite a difficult cardiac history, so she gets tired. She's doing really, really well. She's going to make an amazing nurse, but she gets tired. So she's doing short shifts and try saying that when you're tired. Um, so she does normal early shifts starting at half seven in the morning, finishing at half three in the afternoon and short um, late shifts starting at one o'clock and finishing at between eight and nine o'clock. And by doing those, yes, obviously she has to do more during the week to achieve her hours, but she gets to spend less time on her feet a little bit more time each day resting and recuperating and so far that is working really well for her. She's quite keen to build up her tolerance and resilience so that she can do the longer shifts because she quite likes the idea of four days off a week. Um, so she's going to work on that but we'll keep an eye on her and make sure she stays safe, keep her in touch with occupational health and if she achieves that that's fantastic and if she doesn't well she'll get used to a five day week same as the rest of us. Um, so that will be fine. Um, do you find your own hospitals? No, we have a placement facilitator within our team. Rebecca is also one of our lecturers and she's one of our cardiac nurse specialists and she also looks after your placements. So she will know where you've been before, where you need to go for the rest of your training and she will allocate the appropriate places for you. So if you've had a community placement, for example, she'll know that you've done one, you shouldn't do any more. Thank you very much. We now need three physical health placements in a hospital. If we know, for example, that you are uh, that you have people that you'd quite like to stay with over in Coventry, we can, um, Rebecca will work on that and um, organise placements for you out that way. Or as I said earlier, Peterborough, Northampton and Kettering, any of those. We haven't yet reached out to other hospitals, but for example, if you're from the Derby area and you quite like the idea of Derby Children's, um, then we could potentially, Rebecca might absolutely shoot me down for this, but we could potentially look at finding a placement for you, for example, in the Derby area. It's very definitely a potential. It's equally very definitely not been settled yet, 
but I know it's the kind of thing Rebecca's keen to do. So we we sort out the placements. One of the reasons for that being that every placement we send our students to is audited to make sure the experiences that you're going to um, get there are appropriate for the level of training that we want you to receive. So we wouldn't send you to a hospital that doesn't have the right kinds of experiences, that doesn't offer the right standard of care and so on. So if there was a hospital in um, trouble that were, have got problems with their standards of care or that were very, very short staffed or anything like that, because that wouldn't be safe for you as part of your learning opportunities. So we don't ask you to find your own places other than your four weeks elective. For that, we encourage you and we'll help you write the letter and direct the letter to the right person to sort out your elective placement because it is good experience. But generally speaking, it's a very managed, um, what's the word, procedure to make sure you get the right range of experiences for your training. Um, thank you. I think we have one more uh, question and, and just enough time for it. So uh, the last question is, um, what is the structure of interviews for mental health and adult nursing applicants? OK, so uh, that's fresh in my mind because we've just done it this afternoon. And I have to say, as, as I said earlier, we only had eight students and that's very normal for the first run of the season. Um, we have the first half an hour is very relaxed, come in, chat with all the other applicants and have a wander around our clinical simulation area. And we have various mannequins and um, bits of equipment laid out. And we have two of our students um, co come along and they organise that session for you. So we, we're we very much in the background as um, faculty um, for that first half an hour so that you can relax, chat with each other, chat to our students and get a bit of a feel for the area. The next hour is two sessions where you are assessed but you are assessed as a group so we put you into two smaller groups of about five or six um, students one group um, watches a short video and has a conversation and what we're what we're looking for is for you to have a conversation with your peers and we're looking for appropriate responses to the video. The questions are quite direct if we tell you what we want you to talk about. And we're asking you questions around the video. And we're also asking you to bear in mind the six C's of nursing. So there's a good hint there for you to make sure you're very familiar with those six C's in nursing. Um, and we're looking for original thoughts, but we're also looking to see how do you react to the other people in the team? Are you responsive to ideas that they put forward? Are you polite and respectful of ideas that they share and so on? So we're looking for those attitudes and those skills of um, care and compassion as well as um, appropriateness to the video that you watch. So that's the first one. And then the second one is an activity. And I'm going to be coy and say that I'm not going to tell you what the activity is because I don't want you to be able to think about it too much before you come. It's absolutely not hard work. Our students this afternoon had an absolute whale of a time um, working on it. And I have to say the two groups, without any prompting from me, produced two absolutely phenomenal pieces of work. Um, we had two groups of four and they both went above and, ab above and beyond without any um, sort of prompting from me. And I was so excited by the way they work together. And again, with this, yes, obviously we're looking at the end product, but I'm also looking at how they relate with each other, how they share resources, how they encourage each other to take part in the project. Um, and just generally, how do they function within a team? So you are being marked for what you actually say and do but you're also being marked for your attitude and your appropriateness in your behaviour. So that is the full, the full part of your um, interview. We then have the student ambassadors again um, offer you a Q&A session. I do tend to sit quietly at the back, but it's more for support than anything else. And generally I'm ignored completely in that session. And then our student ambassadors are happy to take any applicants that would like another look at the campus for a walk up the hill and onto main campus and they'll just point out main buildings, 
Usually people are interested in the library and the student union. So we point those two out to everybody and um, at that point you're free to go your own way. But that bit is not mandatory. We had two students today who needed to catch trains, so obviously they went off their own way and the other six went for a wander up to the campus. Very relaxed. So the whole thing is relatively relaxed and informal, but there is a purpose to it. Um, the Nursing Midwifery Council likes us to test your ability within with IT. So the other thing we get you to do is um, devise a poster, just an A4 poster that tells us about you and you have to email it to us in a format that can be opened and printed. So um, that has never proved to be much of a challenge because um, young people these days are far better on IT than us oldies. So um, I had some absolutely gorgeous posters today. They were great fun looking at, uh, but we used the posters as a bit of a prompt at the beginning of the video um, conversation and discussion as well. So that just helps people to get um, started in that section. So I think I don't think I've missed anything out. It's a good afternoon and everybody that we've had this afternoon has said how very much they've enjoyed coming in and meeting us and going through the process. So Thank That's you. all we've got time for, Jenny. Thank you very much. Phew, I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So thank so you. Much. Thanks for okay. coming, everyone. Thank you.